here with triple board certified neuropsychologist, Dr. Judy. Thanks for being here. Oh, and oh, Callie. Oh, Callie she too. wants the attention. Callie, the lab. Yes, and I'm Kyle Kittleson so with sweet. Med Circle. Uh, if you have not already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. We, I know, I know. <laughs> we deliver weekly videos on mental health topics that matter to you. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you can make sure not to miss one. Dr. Judy, we're talking about signs of unaddressed trauma that can manifest in people. So, and these are people who have trauma, but they might not even realize that they have trauma that yeah. they haven't dealt with. And so it's manifesting in many different ways. Let's talk a few about some of those. Let's start with number one. So number one is a chronic sense of fight or flight. You know, like you're always hypervigilant, you always feel unsettled, sort of keyed up is another way that people talk about it, or they just feel agitated. Mm -hmm. That's a sign that there's some unresolved trauma there because basically there's something that is triggering this idea that you have to run or you have to hide or yeah. maybe that you even have to freeze, which is a lesser talked about third response to traumatic events and major stresses. Yeah, in our series that we just filmed that talked about this new evidence-based treatment or newer uh, treatment uh, which we talk about at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that. You shared a really amazing story about a client you had who who had a fear, or a, not a fear, but a really strong objection to some restaurants. Yeah, and yeah. this happened because ultimately he was able to discover that this was where he first learned that his parents were getting a divorce. Right. But for the longest time as an adult, he just like didn't want to go near the restaurant. He would have this very visceral reaction. He couldn't explain it yeah. cognitively, yeah. but it was just, ugh, I don't want to be anywhere near that. He would like leave when his friends wanted to go. And he didn't really realize why his response was so intense. And finally, when he connected the dots, it was actually very relieving for him to realize, oh, something kind of traumatic happened to me here. Yes. And that's why I didn't want to come near this restaurant. And then he allowed himself to cry and to have a huge physiological response. And then now he can go to the restaurant. It's yeah. not his favorite, but he's able to tolerate it and it's not a problem anymore. Yeah, I call that being imprisoned in an invisible jail. Yeah. Because you don't even know that you have this unaddressed trauma until mm -hmm. you start to learn the signs mm -hmm. and then start to become aware of that of those feelings and then you can take action. Right. So let's move on to the second sign. So the second sign is chronic fatigue or always mm. feeling tired. Like no matter how much you sleep, you're just exhausted. Sometimes individuals will even go to seek medical opinions. Like what's going on? Do I have chronic fatigue syndrome? Do I have fibromyalgia? Do I have something even worse than that? And then they discover, wow, it's none of those things. It's actually unresolved trauma. And again, this is partially related to that fight or flight response again, because if you're constantly sort of in that fight or flight, well, then you're going to be tired yeah. because your body is not designed to be like that long term. It's supposed yes. to have spurts of fight or flight. You yeah. navigate that issue, then you move on, your body regulates, it returns to homeostasis. Well, these are individuals who spend way too much time in that fight or flight. Their adrenaline, their cortisol is always running and that leads to that crash of the fatigue. Right. Are these relating to you? I'd like to know in the comment section below. Sometimes they sound obvious, but we had never thought of them until yeah. you would bring them up. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one, is a sort of sense of chronic pain. So a lot of individuals will have pain in various parts of their body. And again, sometimes it is tied to a medical issue, but a lot of times it's not. So they'll have chronic back pain, mm. chronic um, shoulder pain, and they don't know why. And there's no good explanation for it. Well, oftentimes that chronic pain is where you're holding the distress. It's mm. a sign that some distress hasn't been processed. And our bodies and our minds are intricately connected. People who used to think that there was a dualism of mind and body being separate, that's no longer, that's a myth. Mind and body are completely connected. We know that now because mental distress leads to physical distress yeah. and vice versa. And chronic pain can also happen oftentimes with individuals who are also battling depression, mm -hmm. a very common co-occurring symptom of individuals who have PTSD. And so it doesn't actually surprise me that chronic pain could be one of those signs of an unresolved stressor or an unresolved trauma because chronic pain oftentimes feels exacerbated and more intensified if you've had traumatic experiences in the past. And it's much more common for a child to come to a parent or a caregiver with uh, complaints of physical pain, mm -hmm. which are really manifestations of some mental health distress or disorder. Right. Because they don't have the language of saying, oh, I have a lot of anxiety because I'm yes. poor. They'll say, my stomach hurts or my back hurts or I don't know why. Exactly. Yeah. And so that can still happen in adults. It's 
especially people yes. who have kind of repressed that memory away, it'll come out in your physiological response instead. Yeah. All right. I think we're on number four now. Yeah, we're on number four. So number four is GI distress. Wow. Mm. The stomach, the gut, mind access, it's huge. Where's and so, my Crohn's people at? Right? <laughs> I got Crohn's here. Any other IBS? Oh my gosh. So, Awful. so interesting. Oh my gosh. I can't even imagine what you deal yeah. with with Crohn's. I know that that's really serious stuff when you have a flare up, yeah. but GI distress is a huge sign of unresolved stress. Unresolved trauma makes sense. A lot of times people who have ulcers that's triggered Ooh. by stress, yep. that's exacerbated by stress. Um, a number of other types of responses, autoimmune responses, mm. when people all of a sudden start to have these autoimmune reactions that can be triggered by stress. And oftentimes that relates to the sort of gut brain access and so i think people can really should really pay attention like when they have ibs but it's unexplained it's unexplained by anything else like is that tied to a stress or possibly even a trauma i think that's an important question to ask yeah a really big question and i, I know for me personally if i get more stressed or i don't get enough sleep immediately my crohn's will go through the roof i yeah. mean they are tied together so hard yeah. right yeah that self-care is really important all right what's our final one so the last one is chronic headaches and migraines so people oftentimes will have stress or tension headaches. So that actually says it right there in the name. Yeah, right. It's tied to stress, it's tied to tension. Oftentimes people don't realize that they're holding their neck and shoulder in a certain way when they're stressed out. And that creates tension in your head. And then you start to have these chronic headaches. People will go, they'll get MRIs, they'll get neurology exams, they'll do sleep studies. What's happening? Why am I having these headaches? Well, oftentimes that's a sign of unresolved trauma. Mm. And once you recognize that there's body stress that you haven't dealt with and you learn to relax the body and you learn other coping techniques, makes people's headaches greatly improve. Yes, okay, now to the thing I'm most excited for, there is a treatment specifically for trauma that blew my mind away, somatic experiencing, what is that? So today we talked about somatic experiencing therapy, which is a really important type of therapy. It is a body focused therapy, so applies to all of those types of physiological symptoms we just talked about. So if that sounds like anybody who is watching, mm -hmm. this therapy might be for you because it starts with the body and it starts with how you deal with these physiological distresses and discomforts yeah. and trauma doesn't even have to be discussed in detail in this type of therapy this type of therapy really just focuses on your physiological responses when you are traumatized when you are stressed and teaches you safe ways to reorganize your thinking about how to process these sensations yes. so you don't have to be afraid of these sensations this is a biological mother nature response that you haven't allowed to go all the way to the end for a completion, a successful navigation of the fight, flight, or freeze response. You disrupted it by trying to impose a cognitive technique yeah. or a distraction technique. And so it's all about trying to relearn how you cope with these discomforting situations, learning resources like grounding, and being able to realize that trauma experiences can stay in your body. Yeah even when your mind is not thinking about it and just discharging that bodily sensation so that you can feel better. Yeah, I, I was very surprised to learn that there are a lot of people out there who are experiencing the negative consequences of past trauma mm -hmm. without even realizing that they had trauma because yes. they have completely blocked that out of right. their mind. They don't even remember that the thing happened when they were eight years old or 15 years old or whatever. And they're still de dealing with those physical consequences. For me, it, how, and you, I'm sure you guys do this. I feel like everyone does it to some degree, but on a much smaller stage, if I feel some discomfort, like I get mm -hmm. a, a mean email or something yeah. didn't go my way, I will find myself, instead of dealing with that feeling and allowing that feeling to happen, mm -hmm. I will get on Instagram, I'll call a friend, I'll watch TV, I'll go eat a cheeseburger. I will do things to avoid feeling mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Yes. Where I would really be better served if when I f first feel those feelings of un uncomfortability to say, all right, this doesn't feel great, mm -hmm. but I can move through this. I can let my body have this experience right. of not feeling great. And then eventually it'll be over and then I can move on with my life. Yes, and I love that you brought that up because this is really um, a big part of the really fun part of somatic experiencing is like relating it to animals because mm. this is where Dr. Peter Levine, who is the person who came up with this whole concept, this is sort of where his work was. He, he looked 
looked at prey animals in the wild, yeah. and they go through things that could be triggering PTSD multiple times a day. Sometimes, All the time. yeah. yeah, they're like being chased by predators. They see a family member being eaten and uh -huh. attacked, and yet they somehow can restore themselves after the fact, and they don't develop PTSD type reactions. Well, why is that? It's because they allow themselves to go through that fight, flight, or freeze response, sort of in that sort of time limited fashion. They allow it to kind of take hold, and one of the ways that they discharge that extra energy that gets cooked up when you start to get into that fight or flight response is they discharge it through shaking, through trembling, through all the different kinds of things, yawning, like all of these different sort of responses that like gets that particular energy to like discharge. Yeah. And then they're on the other side, five minutes later, they're grazing in the grass, everything's fine again. Right. And human beings, because of our higher learning centers and our executive functioning, we're trying to help, but we actually sort of disrupt the process. We get in there before your body can just like have that experience as you yeah. talked about. And we're like, ooh, like block it out, block it out. Yeah. And we talked about this example of, you know, for example, you are mugged, but your child is also with you at the same time, and you're like taking care of your child. Well, don't lose it, because I don't want my child to be afraid. So you're, are you okay? Don't worry, daddy's okay. Don't worry, everything's fine. Now I have to talk to the police. I don't want to act like a crazy person. Mm -hmm. Instead of just allowing yourself to shake, tremble, cry, go through all of those natural responses. So then later on, that trauma gets stuck in your body. And that's what somatic experiencing is about, is like, let's not disrupt the cycle. Let's teach you how to go over the cycle in the way that animals do, oh. naturally, in Mother Nature. That's so good. So fun. The, you guys, this really blew my mind, this series, as, as we were learning about it. I mean, imagine being able to deal with your past trauma simply by allowing your body to go through and experience those uncomfortable feelings so then that you can literally Taylor Swift it and shake it off yeah. and then start to live a much better life that the trauma is no longer affecting. It, this series, I mean, literally, I was stopping the whole time going, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I yeah. want to give you guys an inside look. So take a look at this from our series on somatic experiencing. Well, I would just say that in my own practice, I've used different techniques that are associated with somatic experiencing from the psychoeducation about the biological systems to paying attention to your sensations and learning different resources. And I would say that in general, people love it because mm. it's tangible. Mm. And sometimes trauma feels so intangible. It's just this big, dark cloud that's inside their head and they feel like it's amorphous and they can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. But somatic experiencing allows them to have a practical, tangible contact with that information, mm -hmm. but in a less threatening way than having to talk about the details of their trauma. Yeah, That's so important because it's all about restoring power to the self when we talk about trauma and how to deal with people who have had traumatic experiences and restoring them to a place where they feel empowered again. It's all about giving them that power back, and I think that this technique really helps them with that. You can watch that entire series when you visit medcircle.com or just visit the links below. I want to know, I know I've asked for a lot of comments during this video, but is this your first time hearing of somatic experiencing? And what did you think of it? It was such good information from you, Dr. Judy. Just, Thank where are you, you. trying to go? And literally, Callie is trying to demonstrate <laughs> one of the techniques, which is she was shaking it off. Yeah. I just feel like this really, this technique just shows us how much we can learn from our animal friends. It's true, yeah, it's true. It's really cool. I've learned a lot from Callie. I hope you guys will learn a lot from Dr. Judy in this series. Thank you for coming on our little YouTube channel again. Yay! It's always so good to I have you it. here. Thank you. I'm Kyle Kittleson. Remember, whatever you're going through, you got this. Subscribe below and remember this video just scratched the surface. For more in-depth videos on mental health topics, go to medcircle.com and join for free.